What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out New Mobile's latest smartphone, the B20 5G. Now, if you're unfamiliar with New, they offer budget-friendly unlocked devices, usually priced well under $300, and this one is their first 5G-capable smartphone. If you've been looking for an alternative to the Samsungs and Motorola's, especially here in the US, this B20 5G might be a pretty good option. It offers a number of features like a 90 hertz display and 48 megapixel camera that seem to make it a pretty good value, especially when you consider the fact that this phone retails for just 219 bucks. So I'm gonna fill you in on everything you need to know about the new B20 5G. But first things first, let's just quickly unbox this thing so I can show you what all comes inside the package when you buy one. Unlike some other smartphones, the B20 actually ships with all the essentials in the box. Sliding off the lid, the first thing we get is the phone itself. This one is in the Daydream purple colorway, which looks really awesome, but it also comes in a more traditional Stardust blue finish. Like I mentioned, New Mobile still gives you everything else you need for the phone, including a SIM injector tool and a USB-A to USB-C cable and wall plug for charging. In addition to that stuff, at the very bottom of the box, you'll also find some instructions, New Mobile stickers, and a screen protector, which is really nice to have thrown in there as well. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the new B20 5G once again, and I should mention that for the launch of this phone, New Mobile is actually offering a sort of bundle deal. If you buy the device, you have the option of getting a couple of cases for the phone and New Mobile's wireless earbuds, all for like 60% off. So definitely jump on that deal if you're interested. I'll leave a link to it down below in the video description as well. So the new B20 5G is a pretty good sized 6.5 inch smartphone. That's the screen size corner to corner. And you'll notice that it rocks a center hole punch selfie camera up front, relatively minimal side bezels, and a subtle bottom chin. Honestly, Honestly, compared to similar smartphones in this price range, the B20's screen to body ratio is pretty decent. And in the hand, while it's definitely a bigger device, it's still fairly comfortable. That's mainly due to the slim sides and rounded form factor around back. You've got a tapered design that curves and contours along the sides. There's a color matched metal like frame. And while the rear cover is all plastic, it actually looks and feels a lot nicer than it is. It sort of has a faux metal shine and that purple finish definitely sparkles in the right light. The relatively flat camera bump around back finishes off what I consider to be a simple yet attractive overall design. Taking a quick look around, on the left side you have your SIM and SD card tray for expandable storage. This one ships with 128 gigs of onboard storage by the way. On the right side your usual volume buttons positioned just above the power button which does double as a fingerprint sensor and in setting this up and using it a bit it definitely feels very quick. Very rarely have I had it miss or ask me to retry my fingerprint so getting into the phone with this setup seems solid and you also also have face unlock as well, which is just as fast. So either way you choose, I have both enabled, you should be able to get into the phone quickly and securely. Down at the bottom, the B20 still has a headphone jack flanking the USB-C port in the middle, and on the right there, just a single speaker setup. There's a regular earpiece at the top, just above the selfie camera, and around back, a triple lens camera setup, which I'll go more in depth with in just a bit. As far as the display, the 6.5 inch screen on the B20, I actually think is one of the selling points for this phone. You get a full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution LCD panel, which on its own is is a higher resolution than the likes of some other devices. You won't be picking out any pixels here, which is definitely important considering its size. But on top of that, the display is also a 90 hertz panel, which allows for a super smooth and ultra responsive feel. The viewing experience alone is pretty solid. The screen is quite bright for what it is, plenty colorful, and there's a number of mirror vision add-ons and adjustments you can make in settings to adjust the color, contrast, white balance, and a whole lot more. I have it set to vivid here. The user experience with 90 hertz enabled is definitely the icing on the cake. This phone feels fast with every tap and touch, and scrolling through or swiping around feels very fluid. For a flagship phone, a high refresh rate screen is obviously expected, but for a device that retails for a smidge more than 200 bucks, it's not always offered. Here it is, and altogether, I think the B20 has a screen setup that's absolutely one of the high points of the phone. For your out loud listening experience, there's just one speaker on the B20, it's down at the bottom, and for what it is, I think it's loud enough and gets the job done. Here's a quick sound sample so you can hear it for yourself. In powering this phone, I actually think New Mobile made a great choice in going with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 chipset 
paired with 8 gigs of RAM. Not only do you get a still relatively current processor, but there's enough RAM to handle all the apps, games, and everything else you throw at it. It's a really well-balanced set of internals. Here are the Geekbench scores for those of you who like to keep track, but besides the hardware, the other big plus for this phone is what you get with this software, namely nothing more than a stock Android 12 experience. Besides just a simple shortcut to the new mobile website, there aren't any other pre-installed apps, launchers, skins, tweaks, or other garbage that makes this phone feel like anything more than a clean and simple Android device. And I really like that. It's simple, it's straightforward, it feels fast and responsive out of the box, and while I think most people prefer this sort of setup, it also leaves the option open for you to customize the Android experience to however you like, without having to pick apart new mobile's own flair. Oftentimes with these budget devices, there's usually some compromises, whether it's a cheaper processor or less RAM or something else that makes it feel like you've got a less expensive device, but here that doesn't seem to be the case at all. I really have no complaints. Also inside this phone is a pretty beefy 5,000 milliamp battery. That's on par with the likes of the Moto G Power, and I fully expect this phone to be a day and a half device, at least under normal usage, though we'll definitely put that to the test. There's no wireless charging with this phone, unfortunately. It's not unexpected for a budget device, though you can juice up a bit quicker with 18 watt fast charging support. So all in all, I would expect the B25G to spend very little time on the charger. Finally, when it comes to the cameras, New Mobile did a nice job here offering a pretty well-rounded setup. The selfie camera is a pretty standard 8 megapixel shooter, and around back, the triple lens camera setup consists of a crazy 48 megapixel main shooter, a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel macro shooter for up close pictures. Now one minor critique I have actually is that inside the camera app it's not as obvious as some other phones that there are other camera modes and features available outside of the four shooting modes you swipe through across the bottom. The ultra wide and macro modes for example are these teeny tiny buttons on either side of the viewfinder and it wasn't obvious at first what they were even for. There's also a few other options hidden inside the camera settings that I wish were more accessible like enabling the 48 megapixel mode for high detailed images or bumping up the video resolution to 2K. All great things to have in your toolbox, but a bit hidden. With everything else that's offered here though, I think this is a very well-rounded camera setup. The important bits, like I mentioned, the ultra-wide lens, HDR, the high megapixel mode, 2K recording, that stuff is better than average for a phone like this, and just snapping some quick sample pictures here, the results look pretty good too. The only thing that seems to be missing is a portrait selfie mode, but besides that, like I said, there's a lot of good stuff with the camera setup, and I'm excited to put this phone to the test in the coming days to see what it can really do. All in all, I think new mobile's B25 G is actually a really decent device for the price. At basically $220, there are a number of features offered with this phone that exceed its price point for sure particularly the 90 hertz screen and the decent internal specs that deliver a fast and fluid user experience. The couple of compromises I don't think are a huge deal, and comparatively, the B20 is definitely a worthwhile alternative to those of you who feel like some other brands haven't been giving you enough value for the price. But what do you guys think of New's new B20 5G? Is this a phone you'd consider right now? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.